superhero jumping in to save the day. Not quite. All right, let's look at a proof. Oh, I lost my cap. Cover. Oh, well. Let's look at a proof that involves trying to prove ABCD is a parallelogram. So again, we just put five things up on the board on how to prove a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And we got to find one of those five things. Now look, we're given angle one is congruent to angle four. We're given E is the midpoint of segment AC. What does a midpoint do? A midpoint divides a segment into two congruent parts. <clears throat> so I look at this and it's be like, all right, well, which of those five ways do I want to use? First way was both pairs of opposite sides parallel. The fact that 1 equals 4, I'm going to be able to get AB parallel to CD pretty quickly. But, I don't have anything with the other ones. Opposite sides congruent. I don't have any opposite sides marked off congruent. Opposite angles congruent. I don't have any angle, opposite angles, like the whole angles marked off congruent. Fourth one was the diagonals bisect each other. I got half of the diagonals bisecting each other. If I could show that E is the midpoint in segment BD, we could go about that route. The fifth way was... Both pairs of opposite, or one, I'm sorry, one pair of opposite sides congruent and parallel. We already have them parallel. If I could get these also congruent, we could prove it's a parallelogram that way. If I notice the uh, diagonals bisecting each other in the last method I talked about, both involve these triangles. And if I look at these triangles right here, I already have a side to a side and an angle to an angle. Can we prove the triangles congruent? Five ways to prove triangles congruent. SSS. SAS, ASA, AAS, and then the fifth way only worked in right triangles, which was hypotenuse leg. So I already have an angle and a side, so it's like, all right, is it going to be side, angle, side? Is it going to be angle, side, angle? Or is it going to be angle, angle, side? In this case, I can't get another side, right? After we exhaust the given, the only way to get an additional side usually is if we use the reflexive property, if they had a shared side, which they don't in this case, uh, with... Uh, Angles, the only way to get an additional angle after we exhaust what was given. Now, we could actually do this one of two ways, because if I'm going to say these lines are parallel, because these are alternate interior angles and they're congruent, then I would be able to get these two angles also congruent, but they're not numbered. Not to say that we couldn't just throw in a 5 and a 6 and mark it off that way. But what do I know about angle 2 and angle 3? When two lines intersect, the non-adjacent angles are always going to be congruent, because they are vertical angles. We're going to go that route. I'm going to be able to say angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. And now I have the triangles congruent by angle, angle, side. Once I have the triangles congruent, CPCTC is going to get me that side congruent to that side. Or if I want to go the diagonal route. Uh, so let's say statements, reasons. We're going to start off with the given. Angle 1 congruent to angle 4. E is the midpoint of segment AC. Now, let's use the angle 1 congruent angle 4. I'm going to elect to do this one by proving both one pair of opposite sides congruent and parallel. So I'm going to say, all right, if 1 equals 4, then I know that AB has to be parallel to CD. Reason for that, alternate interior angles congruent, give me parallel lines. Oof, it's getting bright outside. Luckily the snow is melting off the track as we speak, so that'll make me pretty happy in practice today. So we have actually some track to run on today, not be stuck outside. So I got one pair of sides parallel. Now can I prove that they're congruent to one another? I've got an angle to an angle. Ease the midpoint. They tell me something is a midpoint. I'm going to use as a reason. Definition of midpoint. Definition of midpoint is a point that divides a segment into two equal parts, and those two equal parts are going to be segment AE and segment EC. There's a the side. We got an angle to an angle, a side to a side. Now we get also said earlier vertical angle. So I'm going to be able to say angle two is congruent to angle three. The reason is that theorem vertical angles congruent. You could write vertical angles theorem, but I like writing it out because it really tells us what it is. There's another angle. Now don't make this mistake, because it's not like it's angle, side, angle. I've got to go back and look at the diagram. What do I have in the diagram? It's angle, angle, and not the included side. So it's going to be AAS, and i got the same thing over here, AAS. So the reason is going to be angle, angle, side. i got to make sure I get the triangle congruent statement correct. If 
I said triangle ABE, that's going to be congruent to triangle, you know, A is going to correspond to C, B with D, E with itself. So it's going to be triangle C, D, E. You can hear that noise, that is the thundering herd warming up in the hallway as they run by my door. Go warm up herd. <laughs> but, um, so now, congruent triangles. What have we always been using right after congruent triangles? C, B, C, T, C. What am I going to use C, B, C, D, C for? Segment AB and segment, look at segment AB and segment CD. They correspond with one another, so they have to be congruent. And if I sort of had to look at that, oh, don't you love that sound? Now, what, do I what did I just show? I've got one pair of sides that are both parallel and congruent. So guess what I can now say? A, B, C, D is parallelogram. Well, it's a horrible looking parallelogram symbol. And the reason is uh, one pair opposite sides so I don't run out of room here. Congruent and parallel gives you a parallelogram. So there's an example of Trying to prove something is a parallelogram. We're going to take a look at that next week. But I just want to give everyone a, a start in the right direction as to how do we prove or how do we show that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram.